So what's the downside? The downside is you actually need to store that array. That big N, it doesn't seem like a big deal, and you know, it's not a big deal for the coursework, uh, but if you're doing it on the web, or if you're doing positional indexing, that becomes a bit of an issue, right? So, uh, because that is something that must be me in main memory. You cannot store that on disk, otherwise the algorithm doesn't work, right? That has to be main memory. And if you've got 40 billion pages, that's 40 billion times four bytes per float. That's a lot of memory, so you can't have that on a single machine anymore. Uh, so, that's the downside. Um, another downside for this is this is only amenable to certain types of scoring functions. Right. So um, you can only use trim at a time if your scoring function has roughly the following form. So uh, uh, Q is the query, D is the document, F is the, uh, the scoring function. So F must be decomposable into three parts. Uh, this little G, this is something that depends only on the query. The H is something that depends only on the document. So these are effectively constants. So one way to think of H is... Uh, Actually, no, I'll, I'll, I'll ask you. Uh, and then the third part must be a form of a dot product, a form of an intersection between the query set and the document set. So uh, here I have some function of words in the query, some function of words in the document, some form of multiplication between those functions. So it must occur both uh, in the query and the document. Uh, and I'm summing up over the intersection. Right. So that's the critical part. If you can decompose your scoring function like that, then you can use term at a time. If you cannot, then you can't. Right. So, um, well, we already saw that a simple sum, like the query that we had on the previous slide, can be decomposed. Right. In that sum, uh, what is g of q? Show the previous thing, yeah. It's white. G of Q. No, uh, so G of Q is actually zero here, right? And so is H of D. Uh, basically, we're just taking F of Q in the previous slide is just the weights of the word in the query, and F of D is just the term frequencies of the terms in the documents, right? So, uh, so it's basically the definition uh, it, it is linear, so yes, of course, it is quasi-linear as well. Uh, so f of q is just the weights, and f of d is just the term frequencies. All right. Now, what if I wanted to have, uh, I don't know, TF, TFIDF weighted cosine? Is it quasi-linear? You don't have the G and the H. Well, it, it kind of depends on how you do it, right? So in the simplest way you could do it, uh, G of Q could be the Euclidean length of the query, right? H of D could be the Euclidean length of the document. And this is the dot product of their TF-IDF representations, right? So you take the dot product, that's this part, you compute the lengths, and then this big F is going to take the dot product and divide it by the lengths, right? So Cosine is decomposable like that. Uh, and many other things are decomposable like that. Like an OR is decomposable. Uh, a Boolean AND is decomposable. Many other things are decomposable, but there are certain scoring functions which are not decomposable. And for them, you cannot use trim at a time. And we're going to, we're going to see an example of one of those. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, so what about document at a time? Well, uh, document at a time, you have a higher runtime, and I'm giving a lazy runtime, right? So this is what you would expect for a, for a lazy runtime. Now, if the scoring function is not too complicated and you manage to implement your priority queue, then that's actually going to drop to n log k, and that's good, right? Uh, it has O of k memory requirements, right? So why is that only O of k? Well, because now I'm computing one document at a time. So I don't need all of the other documents at the time when I'm computing a score for a given document. Right? So I don't have to fetch anything. What I can do is, if I have k inverted lists, all I need to do is I need to fetch one element from all of them, and that's enough 
for me to compute stuff. So the memory requirements are a lot lower. The downside of that is non-sequential I.O., right? So if I have a thousand lists and I have to fetch a first entry in this list and a first entry in that list and a first entry in that list, now I have to run all over my disk to fetch the first element of each list. So it's non-sequential I.O., so you're going to have to take a hit in performance. Uh, but you are saving uh, memory time. So basically, document time allows you to trade off the amount of memory that you have against the efficiency of the, of the disk access, where all the lists are presumably sitting. Uh, another advantage of document time is um, you can use any scoring function there, right? So you have a Boolean formula that cannot be decomposed like that, Fine, docker to time can handle it, right? Term at a time, you cannot use it. Uh, it also works for structured queries. Uh, docker to time also has more optimizations of various kinds that you can perform, and we're going to talk about that uh, next.